All right, welcome back everyone to our second lecture on BC310 Church and Ministry Administration. So we just started talking about staff management, church staff management, how do we work with people and all of that. So let's uh, make go forward in our journey. So one of the um, important things, uh, the first step in the process is the hiring process. Right? So what we try to do is um, we try to make sure that we, so the goal is to put the right people in the right place. Right? So especially in the staff, or staff or staff, consultants, volunteers, or for it's true for every every one. We want the right people in the right place. So how do we make sure that happens? It all uh, it depends on our hiring process. How do you hire the people? How do you bring them in? Right. So first of all, we need to know what is the objective. Right? What you know, what is the role, uh, what is their responsibility that they should be fulfilling, uh, what are the skills that are needed for that particular role. We need to be clear about it. If you don't know, then you can't bring the right person. You don't know if you're putting the right person in the right place, right? So we, that means the pastor, the leader, or uh, I, the, who are them is it responsible for that ministry area, uh, we need to know for clear. We need to very clearly what is the work that needs to be done. Uh, what kind of uh, requirements, uh, skills a person must have, what responsibilities they must carry. Right? So, for um, different areas, the first thing we do is we write it, write this down. So, uh, let's say example. We need counselors at Chrysalis Counseling. So, Chrysalis Counseling is a ministry, of counseling ministry. You need count. We need counselors. Okay, you need counselors. What kind of counselors do you need? You know, what should be their background? What should they know? What should skills they have? We should write it down. So we have this role description document. We write this down. So if we can write it down, that means you're saying, okay, this is the kind of person I need to find for a as a counselor. So for Chrysalis Counseling, uh, there are three important things. First is we need people who are psychologists, right? We don't just put anybody to be a counselor. You should have studied something about psychology, meaning the human mind, the problems that people face, how they overcome all this. So at least somebody who has studied psychology. Second, this is a Christian counseling, so you need to be good in the Bible. So it's not only... You have to be a believer, first of all. So we can't just take anybody from who studied psychology and come and join. No. Of course, you study psychology, good. But you must also be a believer and you must know the Bible. Because it's a biblical counseling, right? You have to counsel people based on the scriptures. You have to know how to listen to the Holy Spirit. Some basic thing you should be. Of course, we will train them uh, in these things. But that is the thing. And third is counseling skills, which is how do you listen to somebody? How do you ask the right questions? How do you work with them? Help work with them and help them work through their problems. So there are three areas we're looking at. One is, have you studied something in psychology, things like that? Do. Second is, do you have some spiritual, the required spiritual knowledge, Bible and uh, spirit? Third is, do you have? Counseling skills. So looking for that. Now, it is very difficult to find. Very difficult to find this. Because what we'll normally is people have done studied psychology. They may not have done much counseling and spiritual bi biblical thing uh, they don't have. Sometimes they say, Yeah, I'm done in church. I remember once I interviewed interviewed one person. He, of course, he has good, uh, good um, 
studying and all that. Then he was coming, I was interviewing him, I was asking him, okay, so how do you do, what do you do? Then he started talking about hypnotism. I will hypnotize, I, that is my speciality. I will, <laughs> like, God, imagine hiring him to Christian counseling, he's practicing hypnotism. But he was very proudly telling me, he's, he's applied for a job, chrysalis counseling. He's supposed to come from a Christian background. He said he has been doing counseling in his church somewhere. So I'm asking how you do, what are your, you know, your, your uh, treatment plans and all that. Oh, I can't, I'm very good at hypnotism. He's giving me examples. <laughs> I don't know whether he knows what, you know, what is, what we are trying to do. So, so it's very difficult, you know, uh, people may have good experience in psychology and counseling, but sometimes many no Bible knowledge. So, but this is Christian counseling. We need to approach this from a Christian perspective. So that is where, so when we started, so Christmas counseling, we started in 2011. The goal was to help people uh, within our church, but also keep it open for anybody else who wants counseling help. So we started in 2011, we got a few people, shared the vision, we started. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, it's been a challenge to find the people. So we uh, we have interviewed lots of people, the resumes keep coming, but finding the right people, you know. Uh, how can you know whether this person fits or not? We take them through the interview process. So what happens? We announce these jobs. I'm just giving Chris as an example, but like that, there are many roles and all of that. Um, so we announced this job on our church website and also LinkedIn and other places. Resumes will come. People will send a resume. So the resume is reviewed. Right? So we have our HR person. Uh, she will look at the resume. Like, does the resume have... So from the resume, we can tell, does the resume have the kind of background we're looking for? Uh, if they don't have the things we're looking for, then we don't even respond, leave it. Um, but if the resume tells us that this person has that kind of a background, okay, next is um, screen the resume. Okay, you, you, you've you identified the candidate, yeah, it's good. Okay, screen the resume. So initial call, she will, when she calls, she will screen for like, okay, can they speak proper English? So even in looking at the resume, if the resume has a lot of errors, like English is not proper, a lot of mistakes, don't even take it forward, leave it. Because, hey, if you can't do a resume properly, then, you know, rest of the work, how are you going to do properly? So all these things, the HR screens out. So a lot of resumes we don't even touch because it is written badly. Or uh, we also have another um, form they have to fill up. If they, if they write, don't write proper English, you know, we just leave it because the work here requires them. So then the initial, after all that, in identifying the candidate, if the initial screening, she will ask, you know, she'll have a conversation, check their English, uh, attitude, why you want to work for church. If they say, yeah, I couldn't find any job anywhere else. <laughs> They're like, okay, you're coming because you didn't get any job, not because I want to serve God. Yeah, so that is like, so these simple questions you have to ask. What is the reason why you want to work for church? Do you really want to serve God or <laughs> simply you're coming? So that motivation. Uh, so that screening will happen right, to see the attitude. Uh, we also check their social media because uh, nowadays many people, not everyone, but many people have social media accounts. You can go and check. Hey, are they doing any Nataka over there? <laughs> 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 what is going on there? <laughs> hey, they're posting <laughs> all kinds of strange things on their social media. That itself we'll screen out. Okay, hey, we better not bring that person here. <laughs> They'll cause us trouble, right? So all that screening happens. Uh, then, okay, so far everything is nice. They are, okay, now we do the interview, actual interview. That, okay, so whoever is responsible for the ministry, that leader will do an interview for the, with the person. Sometimes um, it'd be a phone interview, sometimes it may be a practical interview especially IT and media and all, we have to do practical interview. We give them a test, we give them you know, a practical exam. So they, we tell them to come in or sometimes they can do it online. 
we want to see how they do their work. Uh, so there's a practical thing. Then there's an in-depth in interview meeting, you know, looking at details, asking them all the difficult questions, see how they answer that. Then uh, there may be a group interview, or they may skip that. It depends on this. For example, Crystal's counseling, all the th current counselors, three counselors will interview the person. So they will, so three, uh, two plus one, the pastor plus the two counselors will interview them. So there's a group interview with them. So, the, the, so that we get more than one assessment of the person. Then the final round, they'll come to me. So if, if, all of the, if, there's, if they, all of this is passed, they say, yeah, good, 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 everything is good, they'll send the person to me for recommend, with the recommendation, with the assessment. Yeah, the person is good, there's a strength, this, uh, and so then I will also talk to them. Um, again, I will, depending on the job, I will interview them, ask them difficult questions, all of that. Uh, and um, and uh, so we need to see, are they aligned to the vision? Uh, will they stay with us? Sometimes people keep jumping job every year. Then for us, we usually such kind of people we won't hire because we'll be thinking like, by the time, if you hire them and then one year again, they'll be ready to change. By the time we have trained them, by the time they settle in, they're ready to go. So, so all these things we look at, right? Have they stayed in a place for a long time? Um, their commitment. Uh, what is their future vision? So one favorite question of mine is, I'll give them a white sheet of paper. So I'm giving you a trick question. <laughs> I'll say, if you were given a white sheet of paper, no restraints, what will you do with your life? Right? What will you do with your life? There's no, no problem with money. There's no limitation. Here's a white sheet of paper. What will you do with your life? But that's a question to understand what the person really wants to do. What, what is their vision? What do they want to pursue? Right? And then we can see, is, the, is there a match? So it's a good question to ask. You know? I usually ask them. I give them a white sheet of paper. You write, what will you do with your... There are no limitations. No money problem, nothing. What will you try to do? Okay. It's interesting because sometimes people are interviewing for one job. That time they'll be telling something else. <laughs> they'll be talking about something. Then that actually is what you should be doing instead of pursuing this, right? So that you have to see that whether it's a match, whether it's interest, uh, and so you know. So these kind of questions we ask, and if everything is okay. Then we will give them a job offer. It'll be again a return letter. We, uh, we give them an offer. We will establish a salary based on their experience, their skill, all that. Uh, it'll have a salary. It'll have, and also we'll send them our HR document, our staff guidelines. You read it. If you're okay, then you accept the job. Or sometimes if you don't want, don't want to accept. It's okay. okay. But this hiring process is important because you can. It is better not better to hire the right person and put them in the right place. They'll be happy, we will be happy, everyone will be happy. But if you put them in the wrong place, after two months they'll say, oh, yo, what, what job I'm doing? <laughs> they won't like the job. They will struggle, then we also will struggle, then they may not be happy, so then it's a problem. So it is, it is important to put the right people in the right place, doing the right thing. They are happy, everybody is happy. And the work have good. Okay. So this hiring process, we take it seriously. Uh, we don't treat it lightly. So uh, on page 23, you know, some of what are the things we look for? Like we said, uh, we check for motivation. Why are you applying to APC? I remember once one person came. Uh, this is he applied for head of operations, uh, which we are still looking for people and. He had uh, lots of experience, you know, like more than 10 years of experience operations, worked in big companies and all. So I asked him, again, trick question. I asked him, what do you know about APC? You applied for a very important position, head of operations. What do you know about APC, I asked. He couldn't tell. Huh? He said, uh, yeah, yeah, of course, we know it's a church. <laughs> But he couldn't say anything more. 
Then I said, see, this person has not made an effort just to go to our church website and understand you're applying for a job here. At least know what we do. Of course, he has a lot of experience. He thought he can just apply. We didn't hire him, even though he has experience, even though he's, you know, he worked for big companies. If you have not made the effort to understand our organization, to know what you're applying to, why should we hire you? And I chose the attitude. But what we expect is before you go to the job, you understand the company or the organization, what they're doing, what is their work, where do you fit in, how can you bring value you know, to the organization. If you've done that work, yeah, then you're, 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 you're serious about this thing. Yeah. So like that, you ask these questions. What do you know about APC? Yeah. I don't know anything. But all the information is on our website. All our ministries are listed. Everything we have done, our history is there. So if you just, if somebody, if he had just spent one hour or even half an hour going through it, he'd have got a good idea and he can answer. This is what I want to do. Because he has applied for such an important post, head of operations. That means he's going to run the whole organization. So, tech for motivation. You know, um, tech for, do they have the skills, the calling? Where you look at the work history, like I mentioned, at the blank sheet of paper question, I, I already gave you one question, interview question. Uh, sometimes we give practical assessments, we tell them, you know, can you do these things? Um, sometimes we uh, look for dangerous character traits. You know, did you fight with your boss? Did you, <laughs> did you fight with your colleague? So we ask, how do you handle difficult situations all that? So we ask those questions. Uh, so we want to recognize these dangerous attitudes. Then what are some red flags? If somebody comes late for the interview, we won't even do the interview. Yeah. Unless they have a real reason. Right? I mean, if it's like maybe some accident happened or some very heavy rain or something, but it is there is, if, if we give a time, you have to be here at four o'clock. We expect them to be here 10 minutes before four, come and settle, four o'clock we start. Sometimes, you know, uh, this, all these things really happen. Some one person will call, uh, Pastor, I, I have an interview at four o'clock and they're calling at about 3.30. I'm just about to leave. It will take me one hour to come. Me the answer is, please don't come. Please don't come. We will not interview. Why? If the interview is at 4, you know it's going to take you one hour to come from wherever you are. You should leave at 2.30. I'd give extra half an hour in case there is traffic problems, whatever. That is how seriously you must take this thing. But if you 3.30, you're saying, I will come, one hour will take, I'm not interested. If you don't show that kind of commitment. So I have actually told people, please don't come for the interview. They're not interested. No? How do they treat our staff? So, like, once they come into the office, we have front desk. If they talk rudely to that person, you know, uh, talk in a very demanding way, we will not hire that person. You know, they should be respectful, you know, uh, of our people. Because if eventually you're going to work with them. Right? If you can't respect our staff, we will not hire. Right? And I've done all these things we have actually done, you know. Because when after say, uh, they come and say, hey, he came and he spoke so rudely. Okay, we won't. Hire. He may be a good person, may have all the skills, but if he cannot speak to our people, our staff respectfully, not needed. Do they speak negatively about their past employers' experiences? Are they critical about denomination churches? So, uh, so in the interview, you know, which church you are, they start. Oh, they start talking bad about their pastor or, or other denominations, other churches, criticize. And people do all this. They don't know in the interview. They do all this. Criticizing other denominations and so that is okay. Not uh, like I don't know, what do you know about ABC? Um, or sometimes if they're vague in their response, if they're not open, that means they're covering something up, then we it's a flag. Um, so even if uh, you know, and so even if people from, like, a, they may be a, a, a family member of somebody who's already working, or everybody's treated the same way. 
So everybody goes the same interview process, no preference, nothing. It's all, all the same. We treat everyone the same. Um, so what we like to do at APC is we like to hire people from within the church. That's our first preference. And not only from within the church, but from those who are doing volunteers. That is the thing. Right? Why? Because if they are serving as volunteers, we already get to see how they work. We see their attitude. We see how they interact with people. We see. So if somebody is serving as a volunteer and they apply for a job, we uh, it's very exciting. I pay attention to that resume. Why? We know the person. We know how they work. They know us. They know the culture. They know the discipline. They know the thing. So we always give preference to people from within APC. Um, and uh, especially if they are volunteering. Of course, we take them to the same process. Like, OK, yeah, send your resume and so on. Like, for example, Recently, Shika joined us as our missions coordinator. For a long time, we wanted missions coordinator because Pastor Nancy was handling it. And it was getting too much for her, uh, plus Bible college, plus pastoring. And so we said, let's find somebody to take over the missions work. Then when Shika applied, I was really happy because she has grown up in APC. I, I've known her from the time she was in children's church. <laughs> so I've seen her. And what is so important is she has gone on mission trips. She has gone to almost all of our outreach churches and ministered. So it's not like she's just sitting in church. She has gone and on mission trips. She know uh, she knows she's gone to I think almost all our outreach churches. I don't think she's missed any. Maybe yeah, even Varanasi she's gone. That means she's physically gone. She's served in those churches during like as a youth. You know she went on her own. She went. So, and then of course she has. Uh, plus, in all, in addition to that, she I think she has like ten years of work experience already. She was working uh, as a teacher, educator, all that. But while she was doing all that, she also went on mission trips. So she knows how we do missions. She's been involved in that. She's gone on youth missions. She's gone other mission trips. And so we've seen her grow up in church. So when she applied, it was quite easy to offer her the job. Of course, we interviewed. She had to send a resume, looked at everything, did the interview, asked her all the difficult questions, why you want to do this, all that. Are you prepared for doing all this? You know, explain the role. She took two weeks to think about it, pray, then came back, all that. So she went through the whole process. But it was easy for us because we know, you know, the journey she's made. We know she's serious about missions. Uh, she herself has gone, so it was easy. So uh, knowing the people, and you know, it's just very, very good. Um, yeah. So then, of course, before we hire them, we give them all these documents so everybody is clear. And then once they join us, we take them through the orientation. You know, give them all the paperwork, get their bank details, set it all, get all that set up, email set up, get them to our HR, HR and portal, and all of that. Okay. Any questions so far about the interview process? Yeah, sure. Let me see online if there any questions. Any questions? Just uh, most oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, Ravli, you have a question. Um, yes, 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 Pastor. Uh, when you are talking about uh, selecting a role, uh, people for the right role, uh, what if somebody uh, you know you have selected and they are in this particular role? Have there been situations where uh, they might not be um, in? I mean, after joining the role and do it, doing it for some time, they think this is not for me. Um, the, uh, so, how do you like? Uh, is there any like place where you can uh, uh, shift their uh, places, like positions, and see what fits for them? Or yeah, definitely. So we so what uh, the question Ravi is asking is: suppose we hire, you know, we hire somebody, we we brought them in, 
and then they feel like this is not where I should be. Um, how do we do, can we you know so what do we do? In many cases, we try we try to uh, see if there is another place within ABC where they could move to and work. So that's our first thought, right? Is there any place else within APC that we can reassign them uh, so that they can work? Now, sometimes th there is, sometimes there is not. Uh, if there is not, then we have to just, you know, help them move on. And we try to do that graciously. Uh, uh, you know, and we try to help them find another place. For so example, let me just share this. Uh, and sometimes this this difference can happen maybe because of a change in our ministry work. So let let's say this: in 20, 2012, 2012, yeah, God TV contacted us to have God TV programs. Uh, pro, uh, we, uh, our TV programs on God TV. So as we started building that ministry, we hired people to do that ministry. So especially two people full time. One was a video editor. One was a, a director for that pro whole thing. Um, I don't know what it was called the role. Anyway, so two people. So we were doing God TV. Work was going on, all of that. But then, in about 2017, I began. You know, I began to tell them that hey, we are going to stop God TV because people are now moving to YouTube. That they're not sitting in front of television so much. We are seeing a shift. We are seeing that people are watching videos, everything on YouTube more than sitting in front of television. I'm not saying television will go away, but uh, the shift is there. Uh, and so at some point, we will go away from God. I, I told them even 2017. 2018, I was seeing this change happening. So then in 2019, uh, or September of 2019, we made the decision. We are going to go off God TV. So, which means two people uh, will not have work to do. So, I said December is going to be our last program on God TV. December 2019, we're going to go off God TV. So, we told them early, and uh, there was no other place we could move them in at APC because all the other work was already being done by other people. So we had to let them go. But what we what did we do? We for three months we took care of them, meaning three months ahead, we gave them all the notice, everything. You're going to be taken care of for three months. Go ahead and start find, looking for jobs. I also sent their resume out to other people. So help them transition, right? So that's one way where if there's no other role, we help them transition. Uh, if there is a role, we can reassign them and help them try out a new role and see if that works. So yeah, so to answer your question, yeah, we try to do that. Some cases it's possible, some cases it's not, yeah. Thanks, Pastor. Yeah. Question? Like, uh, Pastor, if uh, for volunteers and like this, if uh, core teams are there, uh, what if we select the wrong person uh, like after, like uh, se uh, while selecting volunteers or like making core teams. Yes, yes. We select uh, someone who so is very important first, but after like we feel like maybe this is not right person for this volunteer area or core team. What we'll do after that? Yeah, good question. And it has happened, right? By some... so, uh, our approach should always be. Uh, don't so let me say it's to prevent such things from happening right try to prevent it from happening and i'll talk about what to do once it if it happens but our approach should always be to prevent us from giving a role or a title to somebody because once you give a role it's very difficult to take it back suppose i say i'm appointing this person as youth leader or youth pastor or whatever role then to tell him now you're no longer going to be youth pastor is very difficult. It is painful for them, for others, a lot of people. So it is better not to give a role. 
in a hurry. So be preventive, right? So that is one thing uh, we have learned. So over by making mistakes, so we made mistakes in the early days. So now we are very careful. So what do we do is we try to give them a lesser role. So for example, when Pastor Roshan told us that he is leaving, Pastor Roshan was our worship pastor. He was going to leave. He told us last year, um, yeah. So then my thing was, okay, I have to, we have to find uh, somebody to be worship pastor. And we prefer somebody from within APC. Of course, we can put announcement, get resumes, you know, but it is better we prefer somebody from within APC. And I was thinking and praying about this. And then I purposely said, let us select some of the youngest people. Purposely. So I said, I was thinking, I was looking at the worship team. So whom can we select? That's when I said, okay, let's select Jeremiah. And actually, we asked three very young people. Three, one, two, three, four, 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 four. Very young people. I said, let us purposely select the young. Why? Because we can train them. And hopefully, they may choose to stay with us for a longer time. We can never prevent people from leaving, right? That if, they, if somebody wants to leave, yeah, you have to leave. But if you choose younger people, the probability of them staying with us longer is there. So I, I, we reached out to four of these youngest people, uh, but who are good. They're good in worship. They have shown. They have been already serving for at least three, four years. And we asked them. And then we said, you pray about it. No, no pressure if you're ready to take up. But the role we gave them was not worship pastor. You will start as worship coordinator for one year. So that's how we said. That means you're not going to be worship pastor, but you'll be worship coordinator. That means you're starting at a lower level. Your role is only to coordinate, and we'll help you try it out for one year. At the end of the year, if you feel this is not what you want, it's OK. If you like to continue, then you can continue. And then at some point, after some, you know, some years, when they're really settled in, we can make them officially worship. Pastors, but we did not give them the worship pastor role. So they were taking a very cautious approach. Right? So then Jeremiah and Phoebe came back, said, Yeah, they'll open to it. And then we had lots of conversations, all that. And then we point. So the point is this try to avoid giving a role in a hurry to anybody. Because when you give a role, very difficult to take it back. So instead, start them with the smaller, like two levels lower. Try this out. You know, be it, do this. Sometimes I tell people, do this without giving them a role. You know, lead this group. Just, you know, just lead this. But we're not giving you a title or role. Just try it, do it. So that way, you're safe. You know, you know you're not giving them a role or anything. Just uh, in the sense, uh, official title. And just do this. Let's see how you do it. Right? Now, to answer your question, if we give a role to somebody, and something goes wrong. Maybe they're not doing it well. Maybe they're misusing it. Maybe yeah, they, they don't have the capacity to fulfill that role. Then what you do is you take them aside, have a conversation with them, and say, see, this role requires this, this, and this. These are the expectations. Uh, but what you're currently doing, this is where it's not ma meet matching, right? So uh, either so we try to fix it, like okay, how can we help you fulfill this role, or do you need a change? Do we need to relieve you? Now the sad thing is many people hold on to a role very tightly, even when they're not performing. It's it's just I think it's just human tendency. It's just they just hold, and that's something we always see. They, they, if you give them a role, that's it. Hold on to they won't let go. It's very difficult. So they won't they won't acknowledge that, hey, I am actually not doing my job well. Very few people will be honest in that area that say, hey, I'm not doing it. I'm not able to do it, or I'm whatever. I'm, you know, I don't have the skills to do it or whatever. But most people hold tend to hold on to a role very tightly. So it's difficult. You know? um, so we try to remedy the situation. Have conversation, see if he can. And then, at some point, as a leader, you have to make the final decision. And you have to say, it's, uh, 
I would like you to hand this role to somebody else. I would like you to step down from this role. So you're making a hard decision. Now that's where there are chances that people will get hurt. There are chances that people will leave the church. There are chances that people will get angry with you. But you have to, as a leader, you have to make that firm decision for the good of the church, for the good of the team. Uh, you know, so you're trying to see, can I help you? Can we do it better? But if they're not willing to make the changes, then you have to make that firm decision. And it's happened over, over time that these decisions have happened. And sometimes people take it right. People take it well. Sometimes they don't. And they, so it's always better to prevent it, but sometimes in order to remedy, you have to make that decision and people will react differently. Different people react differently. Some are, have a good attitude, some don't. And, yeah. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Just we're still on the hiring process, getting them in. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, let's talk a little bit about compensation. So how do we decide how much to pay somebody? Now, I'll just say a few thoughts and then we will we'll close after that. So um, as a church, we try to pay people well, but of course, it's not the same as a corporate, right? So let's say if a person goes and works in some big corporation, they could earn three, four, five times more. They could. Um, but of course, working in a corporation means, uh, in, a, in, a, in a large organization, there comes, it comes with the stress, it comes with all the other things that they do. So there is that difference. Like we, are not, we don't pay on par with a large multinational corporation. We cannot, and we don't do it. Uh, if they want to earn that kind of money, okay, you go work there. That's fine. So we may pay, uh, I mean, we do pay less, and we recognize that this the same person could go and work in a corporation earn five times more. We recognize that. But within our capacity, what we have, we try to pay well within our capacity. And generally, what uh, for a full-time staff, their compensation has a base salary. I mean, this is what you're paid every month. Uh, there's a bonus, meaning once a year uh, in December, we'll give a bonus, but it has an upper limit. It's not like how corporations calculate a bonus, which can be big amounts. There's a small amount based on how you have done in the year. So people get a little bonus in December, small amount. And other benefits, like I mentioned, we have health insurance, uh, we have paid leave, and we have uh, uh, provident employee fund. That is uh, retirement fund, money that is going to their retirement. Okay? So this is a simple, simple thing, but this is what we do as a church to compensate people. Now, how do we determine how much to pay a person? Uh, we, it has to be fair. Right? So on, on page 24, one is, what can we afford to pay as a church? You know, in terms of the money. Second, what are their skills and competencies? What, what are they good in doing? What is the responsibility they're going to carry? You know, so obviously if somebody's a leader and overseeing other people and leading an area of ministry or, uh, you know, that, that carries a uh, lot more responsibility, so they get paid more. And then uh, once they are with us, we can see their performance and the results. So how are they performing? What, are the, what is the outcome uh, as far as the organization is concerned? So like we said, every year there are two reviews, one in June, one in December. And in January is when we revise salaries. That will be based on the previous year's performance. Are they personally growing, learning, developing themselves? Are they developing their skills? And also, how long have they been with the organization? So we want to reward people who have stayed with the organization. 
So these are all the things that go into deciding a person's salary. Right? So it's not necessarily a formula, but it's objectively looking at all these things and we decide. So as of now, I decide the salaries for you know, all the people. Um, but I think, like, let's say once we become more people, more number, then we will have to delegate that responsibility to somebody else. But as of now, it's we are still small, just 30 people, full-time staff, we decide on this. Um, and then, like we said, we have these benefits for the people. And so how can you get people to work for church when these same people can get five times more money working in corporates? Especially in a city like Bangalore, you can find jobs outside. And this is where these intangible benefits come in. That is the motivation. Why would somebody want to come and work for APC? Because they want to do kingdom work. Right? Of course, they can go and work outside, uh, use their skills there. But they feel, I want to work and do something like this for the kingdom of God. So they feel happy. Right? And that's a benefit that you can't get outside. If you're happy, if you're, yeah, I'm, I'm doing something meaningful. Mm, opportunity for missions. So you can also go on missions uh, as a staff. Uh, to some extent, there's job security. Job security meaning if you're doing your work well, we're not going to fire you. Right? You, you, you can stay here. And we want people to stay. We want people to be a part of the journey for years and decades. Uh, so. Um, uh, there's opportunity to grow within the organization, learning new skills, learning new things, taking on new response. It all depends on how much you want to grow. So there is opportunity to grow. Our, our culture, the workplace culture, we try to create a very good, healthy workplace culture. So, uh, you know, uh, supportive, free, uh, happy. Um, and then there's a brand, meaning hopefully it will be a nice thing to say, I work for APC. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's a good thing, especially in the Christian community. If you say you work for all people's church, well, it should be a good thing. So that carrying that name uh, may give you a sense of uh, you know, joy. And la lastly, the quality of life. That means you can enjoy your work and also have time for other things that you would like to do. Right. So these are intangible benefits. So when people think about this, okay, you have to make a choice between working in corporate, working in church. Some people prefer this. Yeah, I may not make as much money, but there are all these other things that I get. You know, the, the fulfill God's uh, calling and so on. And so they will choose to work for church. Right. And so uh, there are all, uh, many people, many people are working for church today, have already worked in the corporate. Uh, they've, they've had their journey in corporate. And then they decide, they're not coming here just because they're lazy or something. They're coming here because they feel uh, the greater purpose. Like, I can use my skills for directly for kingdom purpose. Of course, in corporate also you can. You're serving God, but here you, you're directly working in doing kingdom work, right? So I'll stop here for today. We'll continue this next week. Uh, let's take, uh, there are a few moments for questions. So if anybody has questions, we'll take any questions. Okay. So let's um, close. Somebody would like to close in prayer? Let me dismiss, please. Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful time, Lord, as we have studied about this all system and uh, about this church staff management, Father. Thank you for teaching through us, sir, Father. Give us more wisdom to learn more about you, Father, and more deeply about these things, Father. Thank you so much. 
And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. See you again next week. God bless. Bye now.